black and vegan, what's the reason? For centuries, soul food has been a staple in the black community. Our food is one of the many ties we have to our heritage. Would we be us without meat or animal products at that? Is it acceptable to invite folks to the backyard barbecue if mushrooms are on the grill? I'm Amaya Henry here at Soul Food Vegan in Houston, Texas to dive into whether or not this meatless movement is worth our while. Soul Food Vegan was founded in 2015 by chef Tyleek Haru. After preparing dishes and using herbal supplements to combat nutritional deficiencies within himself, his community, and his family, Chef Tyleek made the decision to move forward with demonstrations and event catering until finally opening up Soul Food Vegan. We decided to sit down with one of the head operators of Soul Food Vegan, not only to introduce more faces of this establishment, but also to get insight on its inner workings. I'm Jonathan Armstrong, the restaurant operation manager of Soul Food Vegan. Um, I run all operations of Soul Food Vegan from a schedule to budgeting to anything that has to go on with Soul Food Vegan. I am 100% vegan, no soy, no GMO. None of that is in any of our food. I became vegan three years ago. Um, one of our, one of my um, partners are, is 100% vegan. He's a uh, nutritionist. He uh, graduated in nutrition and he's a trainer. So he actually brought me into the world of vegan, um, no byproducts, no meat. Um, he introduced it to me. Uh, when I came here, I was 350 pounds. Now I'm 200. So um, it helped me a lot of ways, such as um, different ways to eat. Um, I didn't work out. I do work out now, but all that was without working out, just changing my diet frame. So that helped my health, um, blood pressure, cholesterol, um, diabetes, going, everything going. Another veganism enthusiast that credits their health revamp to a plant-based power boost is actress and internet personality, Tabitha Brown, who shared a pattern seen in her family history that most people in the black community can relate to. When they were talking about diseases are not hereditary, that we eat the same thing causing the same disease. And for me, you know, my mom um, died at 51 and she had ALS. And my dad is 68, he's the oldest male to live in the family. And a lot of my aunts and uncles and family members died very young of heart attacks and strokes and, you know, rare sicknesses. To me, meat was the common denominator. And I thought to myself, well, I haven't tried that, right? And they were talking about plant-based eating on what the hell. So we're are we the third biggest restaurant in Houston, um, such as popularity. Um, so everybody comes here to try it. Um, not only do we have people that's vegan that eat it, we have people that's transitioning their life. And some people, they just want to try it and see how it is. So we do all aspects of life. We welcome everybody to try it and see how it goes because it's kind of not a difference because we make it taste like the real, the real thing. As a meat eater myself, I think it's important to note that the shrimp was not missed in this mushroom po' boy. A way of life that has been embedded in our families for generations seems like a rigid tradition to shift. However, student Taloria Edwards might have convinced her family to come along on her plant-based journey. Being a teen, however, um, caused some other issues in itself as well. So being a teen, as I said, I was kind of very much so dependent on what my parents had. What they were cooking is what I was eating, period. There was no, you know, well, let me go, let me go buy this, let me go do that. Even when I had a job, I was not trying to spend my money on food. Um, I was trying to, I was trying to drip. I was wear clothes, buy some shoes, you know, and so I wasn't trying to spend my money on food when there was food right there that they were cooking. And so that kind of had to change in my life. I said, well, I can't eat that chicken y'all making. So <laughs> let me go buy myself something. And so at first I was really just solely buying for myself. I'd go out, buy myself a salad. I'd go out and eat some, some stir fry, you know, or I'd be buying myself whatever. And then I started to think, well, high key, if I'm trying to save myself some money, and I'm seeing, you know, what this plant-based diet is doing for me. Why am I trying to immerse my family in the culture too? And so I would start to kind of buy things for the household. So I would um, 
hide some of the meats and the cheeses in the back of the fridge behind things nobody was looking at and then i would start to fill the fridge with new things like squash and zucchinis um kiwis and cherries i would just start buying literally just fruits and vegetables to put in there um that people were supposed to start eating with little did i know i would just be eating those myself and they would go and buy new meats and cheeses <laughs> So then I took it for myself and I was like, hold on, let me start cooking too. And so I found some vegan recipes and I will never forget the first time I ever made something um, for my family that was plant-based, plant-powered. It was like some revelation for them. And everyone was like, whoa, wait, this don't got no meat in it. This don't got no cheese in it. Are you sure? You for real? Like you lying. I'm like, I'm not lying. Like I told y'all, it's not that different. And I think that was one of the best things that I have probably ever done in terms of transitioning and getting people along on my transition uh, with me is essentially showing them firsthand like it's not hard. This is not, you know, all that different and you're not going to be making some crazy, you know, drastic change to your taste buds. You're not going to be missing out on flavor by, you know, contributing to your health. And I think that was such a powerful thing that I um, ended up doing not only just for myself but for my family. And so now. You know, I can proudly say that they're uh they're not they're not as as plant based as I am, but we're definitely getting there, and it's a lot easier now uh, on my journey through becoming plant based and living plant based because I have my family support and even you know they're eager to learn more about this stuff. Jonathan then went on to explain the minimal amount of knowledge on veganism being presented to the Black community, and that's where the problem occurs. The lack of access to fresh yet frugal ingredients needed to carry out a healthier diet in communities of color are the main reasons why there is a shift towards this new way of life. Articles have shown veganism associated with movements like Black Lives Matter and efforts to take back those lives internally while trying to protect them externally. Internet personalities such as Will Edmund have presented reasonable ways to carry out this process by showing cheap vegan and tasty meals in collaboration with BuzzFeed's platform, Goodful. Come try soul food vegan. It's very good. Health is well. The more healthy you are, the more things that can come your way. All the more things you can do. The more work you do, the more energy you have, the more things that you feel inside of yourself. It seems to me that there is a plant-based call to action from our community. It might not be for everyone, but I think we've concluded today that giving it a shot might be worth our while.